Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Every year we're honored to announce the winner of the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. This year that distinction goes to Rhonda and Miles Goodrich of Molly Brook Farm in Cabot. Keith Silva visited the farm to find out what it takes to be the best of the best in Vermont's dairy industry. Molly Brook Farm stands on Cow Hill Road in Cabot. And when the cows are coming in for milking, it's easy to see how the road got its name. The constant has always been family and the cows. Miles Goodrich is the seventh generation of his family to farm here. Come on, let's go. You feel like a commitment to keep what they started going and try to improve on it. Uh, it seems like every generation does some big thing to keep the farm going. Miles' father often joked that nobody ever made enough money to leave, but in truth, I don't know that anybody would want to leave. Jersey cows have been roaming these hills since 1835 when this farm was established. To put that into historical context, the United States only went as far as Missouri back then. How about this for history? Some of these cows here at Molly Brook Farm can be traced back to a herd of registered Jerseys that Miles' grandparents bought in 1917. I don't want to say Jerseys are better than Holsteins, than this breed or that breed, because the truth is in Vermont, we need all dairy farms, all types of cows. We all are important in this state. But our particular love, of course, is Jerseys. They're really smart. They're great grazers. We love them. They're always watching for an opportunity to uh, cause trouble. Not always, but they pay attention. We used to have one that would pull a bolt out that, was, that would keep the gate down. She'd pull it out with her teeth and then open the gate and go through. And we'd yell at her and she'd run through like, oh my God, they're after me. <laughs> we have to be on our toes all the time. Pearl's not one of our beauties, no. but she's a hell of a good girl. Yeah. The cows aren't the only thing that keep the Goodriches on their toes. Running a dairy farm comes with its own unique set of challenges, to say the least. These challenges get more complicated when a farmer decides to change or transition from conventional dairy practices to organic, which the Goodriches accomplished in 2018. For us to decide to go organic, it was a huge decision. And there were a lot of people that looked at us and go, why are you doing that? But the bottom line for us, why we did decide to go organic, is we were already doing everything that we could organically. The only thing we weren't doing is not growing corn. Our vet said, gosh, you guys should be organic. And that's when I said, well, Miles wanted to go organic years ago. For our land and for the way we want to farm, it just makes sense. Transitioning from conventional to organic is a major decision for a dairy farmer. Doing so means changing how the entire farm runs, from feed to treating animals for diseases to managing cropping, while at the same time maintaining the farm's profitability. We had to make sure it made sense financially or we couldn't do it. You know, no point in putting yourself out of business. That's kind of the whole idea is right. to do what makes sense for everything. It was a rough transition. We, we ended up signing with Stonyfield. Stonyfield has really high standards, but that was exactly who we wanted to sign with because that's who we want to be. We want high quality milk. We want to do the very best that we can for our cows, for the land, and the people that work here as well. I mean, people are important too. At 565 acres, Molly Brook Farm is well suited to grazing. Organic dairy farmers are required to put their cows on pasture throughout the growing season instead of feeding them crops like corn that require tractors and harvesters. 
we have two acres of open land for every animal that we have on this farm. So we're not having a big impact of manure and phosphorus on our fields. We graze over 100 acres, which means we're not driving a tractor with diesel fuel over each acre at least four times a cutting. And if you have four cuttings, you know, that's, that's 16 trips over each acre. Now, on over 100 acres here, the cows are getting their own feed, fertilizing it themselves. I mean, that's huge to, to I think, to the climate. We see good farming all the time. But we the switch from conventional to organic dairy farming was one of the aspects that made this farm stand out to the committee who selects the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. Tony Kitsis well, of UVM Extension chairs the committee. Uh, it's a very big change for a farmer. You know, when the judges come and evaluate a farm for this particular award, one of the things they look towards is progress and their willingness to make changes. And seeing the, what the Goodriches, Miles and Rhonda moved from the conventional genetic type of a herd to an organic dairy, I think took tremendous courage to do that. They were willing to take a little bit less milk production, um, sacrifice some other cropping needs uh, that they had and then made that shift and in four years have turned it into a huge success for them. I live uh, on the other side of the hill. Someone who knows a thing or two about dairy farming in Vermont is Anson Tebbets. He's the secretary of Vermont's Agency of Agriculture and a lifelong Cabot resident. This is a place that, you know, when I was growing up, we visit quite often. Our families spent some time together talking cows and agriculture, maybe a picnic or two. So it's a, it's a, one of the, the great Cabot families that's been in dairy farming for a very, very long time. Cabot sees the Goodriches as a representation of a dairy farm family in 2022, given how they've adapted to changes in the dairy industry and the culture of Vermont. Farms are always evolving, they're always changing, changing their practices, there's new technology, there's old practices that may become popular again as well, the, go the full circle. So this is a, a case where you know, all farmers uh, are just constantly having to adapt uh, to changes. The weather, we don't, we don't know what the weather's gonna do. Uh, we've had a lot, of, um, a lot of storms, haven't had those big soaking rains that we all love to uh, nourish the earth and so forth. Those have been far and few between this summer, so that's something they're following. Farmers are also having to adapt to a public maybe not knowing what they do. Uh, as we have fewer farms, fewer people closer to the earth and animals, uh, there's an educational component. So I think our farmers are always adapting and changing, having to explain, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing to my field. This is how I'm growing my crops. This is how I'm milking my cows. This is how I'm feeding my cows. And this is the product I'm making. So it's always a changing, but I think the pace, things are moving really, really fast. And farmers are in the middle of that and they've got to manage their own farms, but they also have the public that sort of watching and listening and learning, and they're having to uh, sort of manage that end of it as well. Still a robust industry, still an economic engine in Vermont? Absolutely, dairy critical to our, to our, our future, um, has its ups and downs. Um, this particular year, uh, we've seen some increases uh, in farmers being paid for their product, actually some historic uh, levels. Uh, having said that, uh, they're also dealing with some historic levels on some of the inputs, so, you know, fuel, uh, feed, fertilizer, uh, extremely high prices. So that's kind of tempered a lot of the enthusiasm. But I think for the most part, uh, some of our farmers are probably surprised uh, after the pandemic how it switched to um, a more of a robust uh, being paid for their product. Is Pretty going to calf, do you think? No, she didn't. Feel One way the good riches have adapted to changes and remain successful in a business where margins are tight and any advantage makes a difference is to bring on off-farm consultants to provide perspective on trends and changes to rules and regulations. We're here all the time, so we're not able to find out what's going on out there and find out what are best practices. So for us, bringing those people to us, you know, reaching out and saying, what does this look like? Or can you analyze this for us? Or, or even just the, the financial records. Where are we losing money? What can we do better? I guess for us, it's always, what can we do better? And even before the water quality standards came out, we were aware they were coming, but we had, we had people from water quality, we had people from NRCS look around and go, what do you see that we don't see anymore? 
because we're used to it and we just don't see it. We try to be ahead of the game. If we know something's coming, we try to transition into it as soon as we possibly can. And some things we just do it ourselves. Who cares? Why don't you wait to be told to do it rather than doing it ahead of time? We just find it easier if we do it as soon as we know it's a possibility. Because we love the land, we love the animals, and we want to do what's right for the community. Foresight has served this farm well, and Miles and Rhonda have been rewarded for their hard work. But as they look to the future, they know there's still one more job to be done in order to secure the farm's future. My husband and I are both in our 60s now, and you know, we're not sure who's going to who's going to take over. We're not sure, you know, who who we're not sure who even has the 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 love and passion, you know, to continue dairy farming. And there are so many rewards. It's not all hard work, but but that is a big part of it. We have grandchildren that are very interested, but the oldest one's 12. So I, we don't want to push them into it, uh, but they are very interested. They love being down here, helping out. They're good with the cows, <laughs> good workers. Usually fades around 12 or 13 and, and then comes back later on. But The future may be uncertain, but Rhonda says their newfound honor as the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. There you go. I feel silly. <laughs> gives them a sense of purpose and hope. It's, it's just a little bit overwhelming, but it's really a great honor. And I have to tell you, and I hope every farm becomes Dairy Farm of the Year because it's, it's hard some days. And it's really nice to take a moment and just be appreciated and just reflect and go, you know, we've really worked hard and we've come a long way. And the things we're doing make a difference, you know. I, th I think that's probably the biggest, for me personally, just that chance to, to say, we're doing a good job. Molly Brook Farm has stood on Cow Hill Road for nearly two centuries, thanks to a legacy of passion, dedication, and hard work from the Goodrich family. The 2022 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. It's not too early to nominate a farm for next year's award. If you know of a deserving dairy farm, go to the website on your screen to download a nomination form. Once again, our congratulations to the Goodrich family of Cabot, the 2022 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.